So um, actually, I'm a bit of a fraud here. So this is, as you see, this is not my talk. This is Bubli's talk. I'm standing in for her. Uh, we got enough uh, expertise. We got enough contributors to that particular feature here in the room. So please uh, just shout and interrupt if I am talking nonsense or if you want to uh, amend, adjust, um, expand on anything I'm saying. So, let's start. Um, this is about the uh, KDE, the newest KDE support in LibreOffice that has been coming uh, for a bit of a longer time. Work, I think, started something like two years ago uh, and in earnest in spring last year. Um, it's been quite a bit of work. Um, almost all of that has been funded by City of Munich, so many thanks for that. Um, but there's a pretty long list of uh, luminaries um, I'd like to read. Uh, this is my wife, uh, Bubli. This is Jan Marek, uh, formerly uh, City of Munich. This is uh, Million from uh, KDAP. Uh, this is Samuel. Michael Wickhorn from City of Munich, Alexei and Vera from uh, Alt Linux, I think, is the company. Uh, this is Cisco from uh, TDF, and I suppose quite a bit of spare time there. Um, this is Roman uh, and Michael Stahl, also from uh, CIB. So many things wouldn't have been possible uh, without um, all of you, um, and I think it's a great success story in terms of uh, getting community engaged and sharing the, the work here. Um, that's the talk outline. Let's not um, bore you with that and jump straight into um, that one here. So um, Linux, as we all know, it's all about choice. So you got to pick your desktop environment, you got to compile your kernel, um, and you can run LibreOffice um, with the back end of your choice, uh, which can be, at least for Linux, um, there, is, there used to be something like six, if I'm not mistaken, or five. So there was the, the old KDE uh, 3 one, there was KDE 4, there was some old TDE that was, I think, a rerun of the KDE 3. Uh, back end that we at some stage kicked out as GTK 2 and 3 and then there's a very uh, or there used to be very uh, plain old generic X11 uh, nothing fancy looks like Windows 95 everything rendered um, with uh, rectangles and VCL um, back end as a fallback <coughs> so um, there was a bit of cleanup recently um, there's more cleanup coming up with uh, Quailen kicking out GTK2. Um, so, yeah, the, w w when this started, there was, uh, there was no KF5, there was no Qt5. So, with KDE4 slowly aging and distros largely only shipping the libraries because of LibreOffice, uh, it was about time to do something there. And it was, um, on top of that, there was the issue with Wayland. So KDE4 had no Wayland support because it was exposing too much of X11. So the only way uh, to be future-proof, really, with native KDE um, was to write uh, or extend um, that backend. Um, so for VCL, well, let's... Um, it's anyone's guess what's the actual acronym's meaning. So there's five examples. Pick one that you like. I like the last one very much. Um, it's, but it's this one. <laughs> but you knew that, I guess. Um, so um, that's essentially the, the GUI abstraction, or most of the GUI abstraction from LibreOffice, uh, with several um, backend implementations for um, the major platforms and with so-called plugs for, uh, for Linux so that you can at runtime more or less or during bootstrapping LibreOffice choose uh, which of those um, uh, desktop environments or, or plugs you want to run. And it's handling everything from, from Windows over menus to printing 
um, and also file dialogues. But more boring details for those of you who are not aware of it. Um, there's one SAL instance, which is the, the let, let's say the the one uh, singleton that you that you get that you create yourself when you want to run a GUI application, and it's a factory for for giving you everything else that you need from from uh, windows on the screen uh, to file pickers. Uh, and like any sort of graphical thing, and then from the window on the screen, you get something that you can uh, call like draw circle or draw rectangle on, um, which is the solid frame. Um, so that's the actual system window. Um, so d the actual thing that whatever is on your system is putting pixel on your on your display. Um, that includes menus, anything that is floating, tool tips, uh, pop ups. So anything that is really not within the, the document area, so that can go beyond that, or, or dialogues. Um, and also the list box, toolbox drop downs. Um, so that's just a bit more uh, graphical, how, how that relates. Um, I very much like the Sally instance uh, for a bit of more diversity in the, in the naming compared to Sal instance. Um, yeah. So um, obviously, um, the, the SAL instance—that's um, um, what you get from your plug, and then from that, that factory, you're getting all this. Um, this is all like v virtual um, classes. So you, you, that's like an abstract class, and you're getting an instance of that. That's then a GTK frame or a, a Qt frame or. Uh, X11 frame, um, which then actually knows what to do, how to how to display things, how to create uh, system level objects, um, how to react on events, um, and also how to create and return uh, child objects of that. For example, the style graphics, which is the implement or the the interface to use um, when you want to draw something. Uh, Visual, and also actually also the um, the abstraction for the um, native widgets, uh, which I will get to a bit later. So that's the graphics for that. So how how was that done? Um, it was one obvious way would have been to take the KDE four backend and just reuse that. Improve that, changed a few things in the API that have that have uh, that needed modification, and then run with that and retire uh, KDE4 and just use the newer stuff. Um, what that's what, not what happened. So what actually happened is more or less writing a plugin from scratch. Um, by the way, GTK2, uh, GTK3, that was mostly reused by, um, well, actually including that. Uh, reusable code um, by preprocessor and then adding whatever changes were necessary on top. So that that was considered but then uh, deemed not possible um, and I will tell you why. Yeah, I mentioned that KDE4 was um, on the way out so um, to stay relevant there uh, there were two options either retire KDE support, native KDE support and completely um, or to do something um, more modern, uh, but also more effort. KD4 was essentially a quick, quick hack, um, just a thin layer around, like the, the most minimal thing you could do, uh, a thin layer around the existing X11 uh, plugin, just whatever you needed to make KDE uh, config and theming accessible, that was done there. Everything else was just reused. Um, from the X11 plugin, um, with a bit of like some some tricks, like for the native look of the widgets, that was just calling some theming uh, API with a here's some uh, here's some pix map or here's some uh, well in, in this case actually um, um, yeah well it was a Q pix map so it was so from that you could get a, a an, an actual X11 pix map and that you can just split 
on screen, but all of that was exposing uh, X11 implementation details and had a lot of drawbacks um, among them um, that it wasn't really, and it was showing on uh, any number of places, no real um, KDE application. And on top of that, slow painting, no, no proper caching, etc. So that, that's that's how that went. So you you had some uh, this this queue style thing that was rendering uh, into uh, the, the the button into an image, uh, which was backed by by a pix map. So from the pix map, we could then just split that on screen, and there was the button. Um, also, it was reusing obviously um, because it didn't have any any own event loop, the uh, xlib uh, event loop with another set of drawbacks coming out of that, which, for example, meant that there were no real KDE or Qt-style native modal dialogues possible. So if, you, if you're, who's using KDE as their desktop? One, two, at least three, four. Great. So, um, I mean, the modal dialog in a, in a KDE application that kind of really um, dims the, the background window, makes it inaccessible, and obviously, like very obviously puts that, that the dialog, this OK or cancel button or something in, in the foreground. Um, and it's a very obvious thing that's very visible and very nice. And if an application does not do that, it's, it's a bit like on, on Mac, it, it feels a bit alien. Yes, and obviously no valent support because with all this X11, or at least no direct valent support, you can of course use some X valent uh, emulation, but no native valent um, for because of rendering and because of events. So direct port not possible because all that API was no longer available or is no longer available in KF5. So. That was essentially uh, what we were looking at. <laughs> um, <laughs> all the best intentions opening the door, and, <laughs> and there we go. OK, um, challenges. Um, so we can't use, obviously, we can't use X11 windows. So what else to do? Well, we can go uh, and write some uh, abstraction ourselves, like X11 if, if we run on X11, or Wayland uh, Compositor if we run there. But it's a bit, um, uh, that would make things even harder. So why not use Qt5 that has all this nice abstraction already built in? Um, and that would mean also using Q windows, uh, the, the, the cute events, um, with all this nice, in this case, nice side effects of getting native modal dialogues and native menu support with this Q window and Q widget. Um, we were prototyping or pondering two options there, like two sub uh, options. One would be because if you, one obvious way then is to use a uh, Qt um, and, and swallow that um, uh, line hook and sinker, which also means that you need to run the application, which is the, the writer impress renders the application content, then you also need to somehow bridge that VCL output device API to whatever, uh, or in this case, style graphic API to whatever Qt offers. Uh, which we discovered is um, not that hard, for, with the exception of the font uh, stuff, font uh, selection, font layouting, uh, which was at least there was no way to estimate how much effort that would possibly be, uh, and with the with the with the li very likely outcome that there would be no end of tiny little differences, like not getting the same font, then the writer would, the, the, the layouting would be slightly off, then the document would look slightly like 10 pages longer, with all this um, knock-on effect. So we, we thought that's a bit um, too much of a risk um, for getting that ready to be, to be used in, in, in real production. So we went for variant two, uh, which is a, a bit of a, it took a bit of an inspiration from the earlier KDE4 implementation um, um, in a sense that um, there is a backing 
uh, store or, or, or a background um, image uh, that gets the entire window content, including the controls, like document content and controls. Um, and that was still available, so we could get some uh, Cairo surface handed over to Qt and let Qt uh, and get a Qt image for that and a Qt painter and get this, this then handed over to the theming um, API and that could then render the button into that and we could then blip that onto the screen. Um, and we already had that because we have this headless style graphics, which is actually what, what's uh, GTK3 using as well. Uh, to render all the stuff. So there was a bit of existing uh, technology, existing um, uh, machinery we could build on top. Um, and we had the, uh, the safety in that we could, that was exactly the same uh, font layouting, font selection chain as before. So n no, no risk of uh, regressions or, or of different behavior there. So that's how it looks. Not so. So that part is exactly how how Q3, uh, sorry, GTK3 is doing that, um, and kind of inspired by by this this earlier hacks with uh, KDE4. Yeah, event handling. Um, so no more. Xlib event handling. So we now needed to implement Qt event handling. Uh, and we also needed to somehow map user events into that framework. Uh, so we had to essentially write a Qt main loop uh, connector and also use um, the signal slots stuff whenever we needed to know something about uh, events, uh, like anything from redraw to uh, um, dialog closed or, or other uh, things. So with that all in place, um, as mentioned earlier, there was suddenly uh, native menu support available, which um, for KDE means um, this global menu, like you might know that from, or that, that's one option, that, that's optional, but as you know that from, from OS X. Um, because it was all uh, kind of, I mean, that's once once you are able to to put the menu into uh, into Qt, uh, the rest is handled by the platform for you. Uh, what's what, what of great help there? The the earlier work um, that I think was that canonical funding that with the yeah for, for the. Uh, for the Unity desktop with a separate menu. So there was already infrastructure in place to have an abstract menu with uh, pushing the uh, menus and submenus and items, um, like the menu structure over some, some abstract API. And so we were just, just implementing that. Um, same story for um, native theming. So that was, works for notebook bar and tab dialogs so that um, looks almost like the real thing. Um, it's, it's, it's always like for, for everything in LibreOffice, it's all always only or almost only the look uh, and not the feel except for the, um, for the welded stuff that, that Kralin is doing since a while. So that would in theory also be possible for, for that here, but let's not get overboard for the moment. So that's, that's on, the, on the same level now as it is for, for OS X or for Windows. Yeah, another interesting challenge was uh, file pickers. Um, uh, there as well some, some background. So this is also abstracted away um, in the SAL instance. So you, get, you can get native file pickers uh, created there. It's kind of optional, so you can also kind of change the option and get the old uh, uh, like built-in uh, um, LibreOffice controls, file picker stuff, um, but it's, um, well, yeah, that's but ugly. Um, so that was suddenly also possible, um, and we wanted to do that. That's how it works. Give me a file picker, then you get this thing. It has a bit of uh, API, so you can actually modify how that looks. You can add and remove uh, some controls like this, those checkboxes there. Um, 
you can like not only put them there, you can also disable them or enable them. You can select, pre-select them, uh, deselect them. And that's for this password and GPG and uh, a file name extension or something. And also for, um, I think for the image thing, there's also some preview option there. So um, the, we, we did that in two steps. So we, we wanted uh, something, right. So there was, there was another uh, intermediate step there, which is using the GTK3 uh, plug, but with the uh, KDE theming. So GTK3 detects I'm running uh, on a KDE desktop, and then adjusts the theming appropriately so that it almost looks like um, the real thing. Uh, the only thing that was obviously not looking like the real thing were the file pickers. Um, so there was this intermediate step that first, as the first thing, beyond using GTK3 also on, on KDE, um, was to implement the file pickers. And if you don't want to get the cute event loop and all, all the other stuff with that um, um, piggybacking, that would, there was the need to do that out of process. So there was a separate binary that was linking to uh, Qt and KDE libraries um, that was communicating with the main LibreOffice process by IPC, uh, by essentially pipes, uh, and getting some parameters and uh, giving something back when the, when the user uh, uh, did, did some activity there. Yeah, and that was there was something like 90% of, of the functionality, but it was an intermediate step. Um, so that, that was how that looked before, which is kind of uh, Windows 95 again, and that's the native um, K5 setup there. So, um, well, with that, that, that was the first step that, would actu that was actually rolled out and was, was used, or is still used. Um, but we didn't stop there because it was um, we, we could we could do more. I mean, it was it was still showing, um, and for example, this native menu and the theming and the, the model, the native model dialogs, all of that. And it was really, I mean, file picker was just like bloody obvious. Like you open, uh, okay, right, this is just an emulation. So, but the other thing, like for anybody who's really using that on a daily basis, it's just it's just too obvious. And so we went further. Um, and that's what was, I was uh, mentioning, and now comes the stuff that we actually discovered when we did all of that and thought we were ready and done, and it would all be wonderful and fine and shipping in 6.2, um, but there actually there was a bit more uh, that we discovered then um, that needed doing, um, as always when you go into production. So copy and paste. Um, let's quickly go through that. This is essentially just describing how it's how it's how it's set up in, in LibreOffice. So there's this internal copy paste. There's this within the same window. There's between uh, LibreOffice application, but still the same process. And then there's the system clipboard. Um, and it's all subtly different um, how that is handled. Um, then there's this very funny X11 clipboard, or uh, quite, I think, an infinite number of X11 clipboards that you can use if you want to. Um, yeah, and this this is all abstracted away behind Uno API, which is, in theory, nice. In practice, sometimes a bit hard to um, follow the the code path now. Same story with drag and drop. Um, also like internal, external, inside the same uh, frame and between frames. Uh, yes, so all of that needed with the native uh, queue windows that needed a native, a mapping to the native queued implementation to be able to work. Either just using it when it supported all the features or tunneling some handle through that and then taking it out on the other hand and discovering that, aha, I know this, and then taking the data straight away um, from the other side. 
Um, interesting um, aspect that also we largely only discovered um, in, in production was uh, extensions. Especially Java extensions have this, this very nasty habit of calling back into your, uh, so you, you call them with an event and then they call you back but from another thread. Uh, which is uh, most of the time that's fine, but it kind of sucks when you then need to do anything with the UI, like open a dialog, open a window, create a control, um, because some um, widget uh, libraries and Qt is one of them really don't like that when you do anything with widgets outside the main thread, so that needed some some surgery there, and you find a number of extra places now with this is main thread, run in main thread um, code there. This is actually uh, a method on the SAL instance um, where you can just say, okay, I'm, I'm getting a call, but I'm not, I, I can't call this function now, so I'm just posting a mes message to the main thread, and then the main thread loop is still kind of spinning, and then it takes the message and calls the method, and Sends either sends the message back if there's a return value or keeps spinning and the other code runs, keeps running as well. Uh, and we use that, for example, in, in a slightly different flavor on Windows as well because that, it's not that you must use it, uh, call it in the main thread, but you must call, when you, it's called thread affinity, so you, you do something, you create a window in one thread and any further action with that window that involves that window's uh, message loop also have to, has to be performed in that thread. Usually it's the main thread, but it doesn't have to be. Um, yes, and then all the, like, the long, long tail of things um, that you discover and didn't think about that um, initially, um, like native tool tips, uh, all this update glitches, like off by one errors, clipping not, not precisely set, um, this, this funny tools rectangle that always surprises you uh, with the way that it calculates width and height. Um, floating toolbars, um, like there was, I think, some five or ten uh, different issues there to get that to dock and undock, also not only on X11 but also on Wayland. Um, getting presets right, like UI fonts, um, getting OpenGL right for the slide transitions, um, CJK, IME support, which no one really from us knew anything about, at least I can say that and learn something in the process. Um, accessibility, um, which turned out to be actually not so bad. That was some, um, that was moderately good support in, in Qt. If we would have done that a year earlier, it would have been much worse. So there was a bit of a sweet spot there when we started. Uh, dual screen, oh, we, we found a, a great bug there uh, with dual screen that is now fixed in, uh, in the latest uh, Qt updates, but not what is on mainstream desktop operation system. So if you really need your KDE desktop and LibreOffice to do something like this, like present your slides, uh, then maybe you should use the GTK3 backend, at least for that day, because there's a bug that makes dual screen or multi-screen support a bit flaky. And yeah, crashes, polishing, rough edges, etc., etc. Um, so that gets me to the end. And um, so the status right now is it's, um, it's in 6.2. Most of the fixes and changes is also backported to 6.2, but not everything. So the, really the, the full glory is in 6.3. If you're building that yourself, um, do that with Enable Qt and Enable K5. Oh yeah, we also renamed that because somebody told us that um, KDE is not the right name. KDE5, it's K5, and we should be... Uh, Ashamed and embarrassed to not, <laughs> not have, it, have it named properly in the first place. Um, yeah, and it's enabled for daily builds, so if you get Linux dailies, it should be there, the plugin. Um, and it's now, so I would say it's on the level of GTK3 now, uh, at least if you count the open bugs. Um, so I think everything that you, I mean, there's always. It never, nothing is really ever bug free, but, but you can now actually productively work with it and people do that. 
All right. That is um, pretty much the end of the talk and the end of the time. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Um, the, the, the extensions and the, the, the interesting bit with the tra thread affinity and they're, they're um, uh, messing that up. Uh, two things. So first, how did it work in the past? And second, what happens if the, um, if the extension expects uh, synchronicity in, in the order of things? As in, if you return before the thing that they invoked actually finishes, you might mess up their expectation. So maybe you can call Yeah, but, but this... Um, uh, I should probably not stay in here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that actually works because the, um, the the run and main thread blocks usually until the, the main thread is done. And it used to work in the past because X11, um, you can you can do X11 stuff from, from whatever thread you, you'd like to, that just accidentally worked. Okay, maybe one last question, then I think we really are out of time. Anybody? Three, two. Use the microphone. So, uh, uh, I'll repeat the question. Can, can we use that without the KF5? Uh, yes, yes, with the QT5 uh, enabled switch. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, great. For, for, I mean, we, we didn't kill GTK3. Or, <laughs> well, I think X11 is also out, is it? It's, it's still there, uh, the X11 one is still there, and the GTK2 one is still there. We need the GTK2 one before we made a pushback. So, and I think no, G GTK2 is essentially, I mean, just somebody needs to push that patch. Yeah, uh, right now the GTK2 one has a patch to remove it in Garrett, uh, and the generic one is not intended to be touched for the moment. Um, Michael Stahl has a very good argument that it's good to have one back end that is guaranteed to work when you're doing bisecting, regardless of what kind of um, versions of stuff you've got installed. So um, GTK2 would probably go away, and I'm not going to do anything about the generic one myself. Okay. Great, thanks a lot then.